What's up guys? Today starts here, in the middle, there'll be a little bit of this. And it ends all the way back here. Quite a lot to fit into a day, um, might as well get into it. I was going to talk today about, and this has come because lots of people have asked me about this, um, about what the Formula One teams are up to right now. What happens after the testing has finished and before everything gets packed up and leaves for Australia, which happens very, very soon. First, breakfast at the pub with Mrs. P. I should just say that I'm off to Brussels today to do one of my F1 talks for Canon. So finally made it to Brussels and finally found my, my driver, uh, which was a bit of a struggle. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're here now and I uh, believe the venue, oh we're here, we really are here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, I believe the venue is only like 10 minutes away. Um, and then I'm going to do a talk, one of my F1 talks where I talk about teamwork and Formula One processes and marginal gains and all the things that Formula One does very, very well. Uh, we're going to talk to Canon, uh, the people who make uh, all the cameras that the F1 photographers use. Um, the people that used to sponsor the Williams team back in the day. Um, so that's what's happening right now. But let's get back to this video. And this was about what's happening uh, in Formula One teams right now, up and down the country, across Europe, before they start racing in less than two weeks. Having just done their only two weeks of testing, eight days, um, lots of people ask me what happens with chassis because we obviously had two separate tests in we a week each or four days each um, do they use uh, the same chassis for all of that do they swap chassis in between the two tests then what happens when they go racing uh, and the answer to that question is that um, it's different at every team uh, to sort of sit on the fence but lots of people do it differently and the, part of the reason for that is that there are two schools of thought. There is one school of thought that says, and this is what McLaren do, incidentally, um, you'll run one chassis for all of the testing. Uh, and they'll update bits on it all the time, but the chassis will be the same for, the, for both tests. In the meantime, back at the factory, they're preparing two race cars, which are being freshly painted and then freshly built up right now, before then heading off to Australia very shortly. The other school of thought is that you want to put mileage on the chassis that are going to go and do racing so they're not brand new straight out of the box when you get down to Melbourne and people who subscribe to that uh, may well have run the first test with one chassis swapped chassis for the second test uh, for that very reason the problem with that solution is that then you come back from testing which has just happened of course let's not forget and you've got an absolute frantic turnaround in which you need to repaint the chassis that has just been tearing its way around Barcelona for four days to be able to then send it racing in its freshly painted um, uh, configuration so that puts an awful lot of pressure on the paint shop and the people in the factory but that's kind of what's happened over the last couple of weeks um, and as I say, some teams will be building up brand new cars, others will be frantically hoping that the paint shop can get their test chassis turned around in double quick time so the race team can get it back and build it up again to put it in the freight to go to, uh, to, go to Australia very, very soon. Okay, we're at the venue for the, uh, for the talk. Looks quite swish. Um, so I'll be here for about an hour and then it's straight back on the train. I'm back home, but I'll talk to you more about F1 testing and uh, getting ready for, for uh, Melbourne uh, as soon as I've done this. So this is the room. Um, it's quite an impressive hotel. It's quite a nice venue. Uh, I think a couple of hundred people, I think, in the room. Um, this is for Canon, as I say. It's a, an internal kind of conference where I'm talking about teamwork and uh, the things that Formula One teams do best. And when we're talking about Formula One teams and what they're up to right now, 
The car that finished the test will have been completely stripped. For lots of teams, that will have happened at the circuit on the end of the final day's running. It will be stripped into lots of components, boxed up into various uh, little compartments for each, each component, and then shipped back via vans, because that's the quickest way to get from Barcelona back to the European factories. A stream of vans leaving uh, the Barcelona track will get back to the factories in the middle of the night on the last day of testing and there'll be somebody at those factories waiting or a team of people waiting to receive the boxes from the vans and the chassis and then send them off to the various departments around the factory to have servicing done, you know, non-destructive testing done, repainting of things like bodywork and the chassis themselves. I mean, all sorts of processes have to happen, whether that chassis is being used or not, because every single component, pretty much, that went testing will be in Melbourne, whether it's on a race car or on a spare shelf. At this time of year, the teams just don't have enough components to leave bits behind because everything's brand new. So anything that's been manufactured, anything that's available, will be on the plane down to Melbourne. And before that happens, it has to go through a rigorous testing process to make sure that it's okay, it's not got any failures or any faults, uh, even ones that you can't see. And that will involve things like ultrasonic testing, uh, crack checking, um, proof testing of, of carbon fibre wishbones and things like that to make sure they can sustain the loads they're designed to sustain and there's nothing in there that shows any signs of any imperfections that might cause a problem further down the line. On top of all that, of course, there's the constant evolution of these cars. Some of the components that went testing will already have been superseded by new components. Lots of teams will be bringing massive upgrades down to Melbourne and that will involve components that we haven't even seen running around a racetrack yet in Barcelona. So whilst we've been working so hard to prove out bits to get used to, to understand parts of this car, there will still be a vast number of things that will change by the time we get to Australia. So it's still a large component on some teams bigger than others that will be fresh out the box and brand new in Australia. People like Mercedes who brought their massive upgrades of the second week of of testing, for example, won't have quite as much. They'll have, they've had all their brand new stuff and they have already proved it, they know it works, they've got some time uh, you know, gathering data on it. For other teams though, the first time that will happen will be Friday morning. So that went really well, and uh, that means that just over, I guess, an hour, hour and 20 minutes or something since I arrived, I'm now on my way back to the station, um, back on the train, back to London. So flying visit, um, but it was good. It went really well. Um, in terms of other things that the Formula One teams are up to right now, there's lots of little details. Uh, I'm sorry this is quite dark in here, isn't it? Um, but that's because it's nearly night time. Can't do anything about that. In terms of other details that teams are up to, it's... Um, you know, some of the little tiny details, details are the things that you may not even realise, you may not even think about. Little tiny things like uh, the mechanics will be kind of refurbing their, their tool trays and making sure that anything, that any equipment that they used over the course of pre-season testing is, is back in, in good condition and, uh, you know, prepared. You want, you want everything to be perfect for the start of the, of the season. So everything will be cleaned, it'll be serviced, it'll be reorganised. Even little things like all the time we're rolling through different front wings, for example, at the test, trying new components, those little details can affect things like the pit equipment, the, the front jack, which is perfectly moulded to the surface, the underneath surface of the front wing. So if you change that front wing, then you've got to come up with a new plate for the jack. So lots of those little details, the same at the rear, if you change the floor or the crash structure, those kind of things change. So everything has a knock-on effect. It's very easy to kind of overlook things. And that's what Formula One teams are so good at, is that forensic level of detail is, is not forgetting anything, not overlooking anything, making sure that, you know, the consequences of any change are always kind of prepared for and dealt with. It's actually something that the rule makers of Formula One, in the past at least, have kind of overlooked. They've made, we've made rule changes, haven't we, with unintended consequences that have, that have had a negative effect on the sport. Just this time around, we're sort of seeing Liberty now start to involve the teams because of their forensic level of detailed analysis on, on some of the future rule changes, like 2021, allowing teams to use their own CFD uh, resources to, to help shape that, that 
future of the sport, which is, I think, a positive thing. Uh, you know, you might have a new sponsor come on board at the last minute, and that might mean the whole garage network, banner network, you know, the partition boards have to be re-stickered with the new branding on. You know, your team kit might have to be updated. All of those things, you can imagine just how much is involved in a simple rebranding exercise on the team kit of an entire Formula One team. It's huge, it is huge. So whilst we all sit at home thinking, right, there's two weeks between the end of pre-season testing and the first race, for the Formula One teams, of course, there's nowhere near that amount of time. The freight has to leave over a week before the race starts, and that means that's the deadline they're all working to. So when the chassis get stripped, the electrical harnesses get sent off to the electrical department for testing, everything's going away to be repainted and reserviced and refurbished. Only once all that's done does it then come back to the race base, to car build or to the race team to be put back together. And even then, they don't get everything. The car will be sent, built up with just a space, for a space saver frame in place of the engine because they won't get that until they get to Melbourne. So even once the cars are unpacked in Melbourne and put into the garage, they've then got to be stripped to some extent again before they can then receive their power unit and put that in, in, in its place. So only then does the actual finished car get fired up and tested for the final time before it runs on the Friday in Melbourne. So incredibly busy times for everybody within Formula One right now, just while we're all sitting at home with our feet up, desperate for the first race to come around. <laughs> um, and speaking of putting your feet up, now that I've kind of finished work, I'm just waiting for my train to go home. I can get on it. <laughs>